Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and welcome to a beginner's guide for Medieval 2 Total War. On my channel, I've previously done two beginner's guides that have been relatively successful and have definitely helped many people out there. One of them is Total War Shogun 2, and the other one is Total War Rome 2. Both of them are on the screen right now. They're clickable links. If you're interested in both those games, then click on those links, and it will take you straight to that video. Alternatively, there is a playlist on my channel, and you can check out my beginner's guides there. But anyway, today we're doing Medieval 2 Total War. So this is what the screen looks like. This is a beginner's guide, like I said. So all the stuff I mentioned in this video is basically going to be uh, the basics of the game. It's going to be um, basic kind of uh, battles, campaigns, mechanics, uh, diplomacy, lots, lots of different stuff. So first of all, this is a single player, so what looks like tutorial. Definitely recommend playing the Norman Co uh, Conquest tutorial. It will definitely be helpful to people Grand campaign is what we're going to be looking at. There's also a custom battle option, a quick battle option, and a historical battle. If you click on the historical battles, it gives you a list of different battles. So you've got the Battle of Agincourt, Arsuf, Hastings, Otumba, Pavia, Tannenberg, and Setenil. Or, or Setenil sorry. Different um, historical battles that you can play. It gives you a narrative at the start, a little bit of a little bit of an like, introduction to what actually happened, and then it's up to you to, to, change, to change history or to replicate history. But like I said, Grand Campaign is the bread and butter, and it is what we are playing. So at the start of the game, after you've bought this game, you have five factions that you can play as. If you conquer other nations, or if you download mods, then other factions become available. But with the base game, you start off with these five. They're England, France, the Holy Roman Empire, Spain, and Venice. They are the five factions you start with. And you have your advice level, so you can turn advice off, which is what I've got. Only vital information, get me started, it'll tell me absolutely everything. Options there for you to go through. Difficulties, we've got medium, easy, we'll keep on medium. Battle difficulty, easy, medium, hard. I usually play on very hard, very hard, or legendary, legendary in the later um, iterations of the series. But for the purpose of this video, I will be playing on medium and medium, just to give you um, a kind of balanced uh, overview. Um, to show you the basic features basically, but what I would recommend if you are a new player probably start best start off with uh, Easy or medium see how you fit and if it's too easy bump the difficulty up Slowly progress until you're at a decent sort of level and you're comfortable with the game I'd then recommend try try different challenges out like um, There's some youtubers like mr. Smart donkey for example who play on legendary difficulty with Shogun 2 and they do stuff like uh, artillery only or no cavalry and just stuff like that so just test yourself. Always look to experiment and try your best to um, to have fun, well to have have fun and try your best is, is the other main things you should be looking to do in this game. We're going to be starting off with England, so it tells you by here an overview of the faction. It gives you a bit of a background to the faction, which you can see all here. I'm not going to read all this to you. Strengths so both superb longbowmen and strong infantry, but weaknesses is a poor variety of cavalry. That's what it says. So that's a basic overview. And it highlights the longbowmen here, so we're saying that they are a fantastic unit to use. If you use France, you've got cavalry. If you use the Holy Roman Empire, you've got Gothic knights. And it just goes through them like that. Conquistadors of Spain and Venetian heavy infantry. So it just gives you um, like a, a main kind of unit or a staple of that faction, basically. Um, campaign, so long and short. So a long campaign with England would be to hold 45 regions on the map. And they include Jerusalem. So I can hold any 45 regions... That I want, but I've got to have Jerusalem over by here. So obviously I'm going to be starting off there and working my way towards Jerusalem. Short campaign, hold 15 regions. And I have to eliminate France and Scotland. So France got to be gone from here, Scotland got to be gone from here. That's what we're going to do today. So what we're going to do, we're going to click the start button. And we're going to start things off. I'm going to skip this as well. That's basically an intro video which you get um, on every single campaign that you start uh, on Medieval 2 Total War. We're not going to do that though. And also, a quick tip by here for those of you that are used to the newer games in Total War. What I've done right now, I've got the keyboard on WASD. On the older games, especially this game Medieval 2, you would actually be using up, down, left, right, which is really confusing. So what I recommend doing is go on to your game settings, go to game options. Uh, I think actually, you know, UI... It's actually on the, the menu just left, actually. But if you go into game options, go on to keyboard settings, and then change it to WASD... Um, that way it makes things much easier to use then when you when you pick up the older games. So that's what we're doing right now. So this is what the campaign map looks like. If I scroll the, the mouse wheel all the way out, this is how far out it goes. If I scroll it all the way in, that's how close it can go. I'm just going to keep it out like this for now. I like to keep it at a fair distance so I can just see everything. 
Alternatively, you've got the campaign map on the left-hand side here, so you can look at things. So the red on the map is what we currently own. So if I hover over the map here, I can actually zoom in. If I hover over, it's got Nottingham, it's got London, and then it's got Cannes. That is what we own, those three settlements. And straight away, you'll see other settlements nearby the pop-up. So we've got Rennes, we've got Bruges, and we've got York. All three of these settlements have a grey flag by them with the two swords crossing. Rebel Town, French Rebels, at war. Over here, same thing, Rebel Town, Flemish Rebels, at war, and English Rebels, at war. Recommended to take these out straight away. Rebels um, are at war with everybody because they are rebels, no one likes them. Dirty scum, basically. And the more settlements you have, the more buildings you can build. So to build a building, you click on a settlement. So if I take Can, for example, click on it and it shows you what's currently there. So this is a castle. I have a garrison quarters, a castle, which I can upgrade, and a port. If I right click on the garrison quarters, it tells me everything about the garrison quarters. So I can have um, the training of four levy spearmen and I can have up to six peasants. So it's a very basic stuff here at the garrison quarters. If I right-click the castle, it tells you I get extra wall defences, reinforced gates, I get a public order bonus due to the law by 15%, and I get three recruitment slots. If you go into the building by here, where it says open construction window, click on that. All of these are available to build here at this castle, so I can have a stable. If I right-click on there, it tells me what I can have. I can have hobbelars, which are a type of cavalry. If I go into the drill square, right-click, I can have billmen, levy spearmen, and peasants. If I do it on the boyer, I can have peasant archers. So it's whatever you think is worthwhile. Some things will allow you to recruit units. Some things will help public order. For example, land clearance, which I've right clicked on right by here. Um, it get, you get improved farms and food production plus one. The whole point is to try and balance things out. That is what you need to try and do with your settlements. You can also um, show settlement details by this purple button by here. If you click on that, it actually tells you. So population growth. Trade is going up slightly by 0.5%. Um, all the positives on the top bar, all the negatives on the bottom bar. Squalor, 0 0.5, but we've got base um, farming, so 0 0.5, and we've got trade. So it's slightly grow it's, it's growing slightly. Public order is really good, 180% positive. Only um, slightly uh, religi religious unrest is slightly down by 5%, and unrest in general is down. But all of this, the garrison, this there, the law, this there, is keeping it in a positive. And the income as well is also doing really well. I'm bringing in 664 per turn. Religion is Catholic, plus 70%, and then, and that's obviously good for me, because our faction is Christian, but um, Pagan and Heretic is giving me a minus. So it's working out, what you, what you need to try and do is get more positives than negatives to keep your towns in order. I can also set this settlement to be the faction's capital, so if you go to start over it, obviously London would be our capital, so if I click on London right now, come up to London, Click on the settlement window, click on settlement, it's greyed out. That's because it's already our capital. And again, public order is really good by here. You've got health, you've got governor's influence. Obviously, the things you build affect the public order as well. So if you get more food, then your population growth would go up. If you get more traders and stuff, then your income goes up. Just things like that. And obviously, if you're under siege or public order is bad in, in your faction, then it'll have a negative effect. And that's basically how the, the, um, the building slots work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how I build something at London. So... If we have a look, we've got a wooden wall, which you can upgrade. Town guard, we have small church, town hall, grain exchange, and dirt roads. These are all things that you can currently um, construct in London. Just going to have a quick glance through all of them. We have a church that will give us a public order bonus due to happiness, obviously. A brothel will give us public order bonus. Ballista maker would be useful because I can have artillery. So what I'm going to do is get that ballista maker straight away. I click on it, it costs 1,600 florins. So I click on that, and as you can see, I lost money at the bottom right hand side. If I click off that, I start off with 10,000 florins, click it, it goes down. That's why I lose this turn. So I'm gonna be building that there. Same with recruitment. You click on the recruitment tab, it tells you everything you can make here. So we can have spear militia, town militia, or a diplomat, and that is it. That's at London. Nottingham, what can I recruit at Nottingham? Well, if I actually tick the tick off the recruitment bar and construction it can actually build things because obviously i had an auto um auto managed by the ai which isn't good but in nottingham i can have really good cavalry i can have mailed knights or hobbelars so i already got hobbelars here so it's working out what you need for example 
If I can already recruit Hobblers at Nottingham, there would not be any point perhaps to get in London because the only the neighbouring settlements it wouldn't be it wouldn't really be any need. But I'm going to try and get uh, one unit of Hobblers recruited at Nottingham. As you can see at Nottingham, we have two spear militias and peasant archers. So we do have a, a small garrison there. London, five units. We have spear militia. We have spear militia again, town militia, peasants, and then King William the Conqueror. As you can see, these three units are all in blue. The background's in blue, whereas the rest is grey. That is because it's free upkeep. If you hover over it, it says free upkeep while garrison. So that means that it doesn't cost me anything to have them in London, which is really cool. If you hover over your faction leader and right-click, brings up everything you need to know about him. So he's 50 years of age. He has four for command, so it says he's a hardly a tactical genius, but this man is showing some aptitude for leadership. Uh, dread, authority, and piety. Most generals at the start of the game are pretty balanced, as you can see, he's halfway on most of them. You can lose stars, you can gain stars, you can get more dread. For, so, for example, if you keep executing people rather than ransoming them or releasing them, his dread would go up. And he has lots of traits then, so plus one command, plus two authority, plus three to his personal security, because he's a faction leader. Promising commander, conquering hero, I get lots of different stuff here. Cruel leader, cunning. Just gives you an idea of what he can actually do and some of the stuff that he has, like plus two dread. And that's what goes into this kind of barber there then. So what he gets with his traits affect his overall ability. The higher up he is on most of these things, then the better he's going to be. And that's what the, that's basically what you need. And obviously the better that he is, the more hit points he gets, which means he's harder to kill in battle. This little guy back here is important as well. This is an English cardinal. Because we're a Christian faction, wherever I put him, he spreads religion. So, for example, I've got, I've got him selected right now. If I hover over the land, it says 90% Catholic here. If I go into Wales, it's 85% Catholic. If I go into York, it's 90% Catholic. So, Wales is slightly down, so it's probably worth taking him there because there's a settlement over here, which is a rebel settlement. We're going to try and take that, and we're going to try and conquer Wales. We've got a nice region in the south before we go up to Scotland. Also, you see how quickly he moved in? If you want him to move quickly, press spacebar. Makes the move a lot faster. I have an army here, Prince Rufus. He's our prince. We right-click on him. And as you can see, lots and lots of different traits. So he's, he's heir apparent, he's talent for command, and he's a promising commander. But he has only three for command rather than four. Doesn't have any chivalry at all. Loyalty is pretty good, and his piety is okay-ish. But he's 26, so he's young, so we can keep him alive, develop him, and make him a beast in this campaign. Also, I've clicked on him, and because he is in, the, is in a region where you can get... Mercenaries, I can get two mercenary Welsh spearmen and one mercenary crossbowmen, so that's cool. But you have to be outside of a settlement. For example, uh, the king who's in London, if I was to bring him out, I can do the same there. It's basically the helmet with the gold coins next to it. Click on that, and it's exactly the same thing there. Because it's in a similar sort of region, it's the same type of people. But I'm going to put him back in London, don't need to use him just yet. What we're going to be doing is attacking, I think we're going to go for Wrens probably in this video, or do we go for York? Uh, I'm actually tempted to go for York. York looks like it's not really def um, not really well developed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the battle. Uh, God, can't get my words out. The battle uh, interface and how you would engage in a battle in this campaign. So what we're gonna do? Nottingham has these units here. None of these are free, so I'm just gonna take one peasant archer and one uh, spear militia and pop them into Prince Rufus's army. So what he ha now has, he now has three peasant archers and three spear militia and also his own cavalry. We are recruiting the Hobblers, which will take one turn to recruit. We have some cavalry for the next battle. This guy by here, Richard, he's an English spy. You click on him. You can move him to see more of the land. So if I move him towards North Wales, I can actually now see Dublin because it's been uh, revealed on the map. And as you can see, there's a rebel Irish village over there, which we can also take. And also, you can see a rebel wooden castle that's sort of appeared. Can't see the banner on it, but you know it's there. So I now know where to attack. It's, uh, it's actually Canal Vaughan. If you take Canal of On, then you take all of Wales, basically. You take Dublin, you get most of Ireland, and, and so forth. So, Because in, in the main game of Medieval 2, you only have Scotland and England as playable factions. The rest are rebel settlements. But if you are interested in playing as Ireland or Wales, then if you buy the expansion pack, which is the Kingdom's expansion, you can play the Britannia campaign. We get an enlarged map of the, all of Britain. All four home nations are playable, as well as Norway, which have a couple of the islands up here in Scotland. So that's a pretty cool campaign, one I would definitely, definitely recommend. It's also worth noting the uh, faction screen. So open faction window, you see it by here. It's basically what your uh, faction logo is. Click on it and it tells you everything you need to know about your faction. So it says it by here, capital city, London. Faction leader, create this general, 
Generals, I have three, one in each settlement. Cities, one, which is uh, London. Battles, one, none. Battles, lost, none. Castles, two. Regions, control, three. Turn number, this is one. Year, ten, eighty is when we start. And then it says victory conditions. Hold 15 regions. Eliminate France and Scotland. As you can see, it's got France highlighted on the north and France down over here. Both of them got to go. I can auto-manage everything, let the AI do it all for me, and the taxes, or I could just tick off it. I'd rather do it myself, probably a safer option to do that. And that's our faction. If you click on Diplomacy, I'm only at war with the Rebels. Most factions start off only at war with Rebels, as you can see. In other Total War games, some of them do start off at war, but at the very start of this game, everybody is at war with the Rebels. The Pope, so this is important as well. The higher favour you got with the Pope, then the higher other factions respect you that are the same religion. So all of these factions here are Christian. Hungary, Poland, Portugal, Denmark, Scotland, Milan, Sicily, Venice, Spain, Holy Roman Empire, France and England. Show College of Cardinals. So these are the, the Cardinals. We currently have one, Aston the Corrupt. The higher his uh, stats go, then the more... Um, the, well, the better respected you become, basically, as far as the Pope is concerned. So it's, it's a similar kind of thing. Um, they all start off the same, as you can see. So it's very much um, a base kind of start for you. It's very basic. Everybody's got the same stuff. So if you're looking for a, a, an early campaign, I definitely recommend England. And again, this just gives you rosters, tells you London. Population's green, green. So Nottingham's actually, is no growth. So that's something we need to try and sort out in Nottingham, for example. So if I was to click on Nottingham... Get that construction going. Something will give us growth. So let's have a little look. Pez, Dodgers, Ballista, Upgrades, Armour. That would be useful. Trade of goods. Probably a port would be useful then. It's important just to work out. Food production would be important. I think the food production is going to be important. So what we'll do 600 florins. We'll click on that. And that is done. So that will help our growth eventually. We also have these ships which you can use. You can put men onto a ship and transfer them between the ports. I'm going to just put this guy in this port for now. And I'm going to put the ship to join up with him. So I've got two ships in one um, navy, basically. So it makes things slightly better in case I do get attacked. And yeah, that is what we have so far. Just going to quickly look at what else I have. I've got a dip diplomat by here. Diplomats are important. You can basically uh, use them to get trade and stuff. So for example, if I click on this French settlement here. Here we go. So I can ask to bribe. And then what will happen is uh, they will join. The settlement will join my faction. And uh, the fallen visitors will join your faction. The fallen units will join your faction. So I can make a bribe offer. Rejected. Obviously, it's um, it's rejected. It kills you on the right-hand side. They kind of uh, state this with you. So power is very weak. Wealth, very poor. They are Catholic. Reputation is mixed. And the priorities are unknown. And it gives us hours on the left-hand side then as well. You can offer trade rights though. So if I make, click on make offer, trade rights. It's a generous offer. If I have offer, If I ask for map information... Make that offer. They're not interested. So unfortunately I lost out that time. But as always next time. Try and get map information from them. Try and get trade from them etc. Anyway. We're going to end turn. Just going to put him slightly near to the settlement. We're going to end turn. We're going to get those uh, cavalry units. That uh, cavalry unit. And then we're going to attack. And have a, our first battle. Just to show you how the battle mechanic actually works in this game. It's actually going to be snowing as well. So we're going to have a nice snow battle. End of turn report. This is important as well. Every turn you get an end of turn report. Tells you, so as you can see, I lost 2,633. But obviously that's because I spent money last turn trying to build stuff. Income, 5,000. Expenditure, nearly 8,000. Total, 7,367. Balance of power. Military, France have got the best military at the moment. Financially, Russia and the Byzantine Empire. Production, population and overall, they're the best faction. Just gives you an idea of who's doing well and who's not. Recruitment reports. So these are the units that I recruited last turn, all in Nottingham. So there you go, I got Mailed Knights and Hobblars, which are going to pop now into Prince Rufus's army. Prince Rufus, we know there's a settlement there. We're going to click on it. Don't currently have enough movement points, so it's red. When it's green, it shows where you can move. So for example, that's green, you can get that far. But if I click, say, there, he can't get to there for two turns. But we'll try and move him as far as we can for now. My Spy, we're going to move him just a bit closer. And there we go, there's Canalvon. It says chance of success 50%. If I click on that, there's a... 50% chance he'll be successful getting the settlement. If he doesn't, then it'll, I think something like 25% chance he dies and 25% chance that he escapes, which means you'll lose him for a turn or two. But yeah, that's how the spy works. So what we're going to do, we've got a princess here as well. So princesses, I personally don't think they're that useful. 
in Medieval 2, but what you can do, you can try and use her on an enemy general. And if she's got good enough skills, like she's got three charm, if you can get her to get four, five, six, or seven charm, use her on an enemy or a neutral faction's general, the chances are she can wed that general and they will become part of your faction. So it's another way of using bribery, really. But yeah, I don't personally like use it. We're going to see if we can get something in France now. So we'll right-click on the settlement again. We're going to offer trade again. But this time we're offering map information and we demand map information. And because I'm feeling quite generous, I'm going to actually make a single payment of, we'll say, 300 florins. Make that offer. Pretty decent offer. And they've accepted it. There we go. So what's happened now is I can now see different French settlements. So you can see there's one down there, two up here, and then they have uh, Angus down here as well. So they have about five, four or five settlements that uh, that they begin with. And also on the map down here, you can now see uh, there's like a lot of blue, which you can see, which is now France revealed on the map it's actually one down here which i missed as well so that helps us out so if i want to attack them i now know some of their targets uh, it's also worth knowing where people are as well because the map does get updated on a regular basis obviously when factions are at war and that's the other thing as well if you click on here go on to diplomacy again i showed you this earlier but it's just to check no one's at war yet after the first turn so that's good what we're going to do now then we're going to be ending turn to have our battle we finally show a battle that french guy just attacked those rebels there and now he's come to our land it's quite naughty of him but he's uh actually attacked the rebels there but the french guy's on our lands now some people might perceive that as trespassing and scotland have come to us with their diplomat and what are they doing scotland want trade rights so again a chance for me to get trade now if i was playing this i would probably reject because i would be looking to take out scotland anyway but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to accept the trade rights. But what we're going to do is ask them for map information. They don't like that. We'll offer our map information, which is balanced. And just make that make that offer. And it's been accepted. There we go. So I now know where all of Scotland, are, uh, all of Scotland is. As you can see on here as well, new mission. The Council of Nobles. I got 15 turns to um, capture York. York is what we're going for anyway, and they'll give the council will give me two thousand five hundred florins. That's what that, what's that? That's what that means, and it's by here. You click on it, and it brings up all your missions here. Construction complete, land clearance, end of turn report, and again France, Russia, the Byzantine Empire. This time I made a profit of four hundred sixty. That's because I didn't spend anything last turn, and now I can see where the Scot with with the Scotland with Scotland where the Scottish lands are. So they have uh, this settlement up there. Is it just the one they have? Just the one they have, just uh, Edinburgh, right by here. So obviously York is what we need to take out because they're going to try and take out that one up there, which means they've got a little bit of consolidation in the north and they could perhaps go across here and take Dublin as well. So it's important that we take York as soon as we can, which is what we're going to do now. So what we're going to do, now if I, want, if I didn't feel confident, um, I could obviously use my, my recruitment of, of uh, mercenaries. But if I right click, Oh shit, I didn't mean to right click there. If I let, let double left click there, it shows me what they have. So they have some bows, they have some peasants, and they have some spear militia. I'm confident though. So we're just going to click. And because there's no walls on this settlement, this flash is red, so we can assault straight away. So what's what we're going to do? I can auto resolve this. The army ratio, strength ratio is 40 to 9. So it's heavily in our favor. We've got a proper prince, they're just a, a, a captain. We've actually got more men. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to fight this. Just to show you some of the basic um, unit movement commands, uh, the UI, and how a basic battle in Medieval 2 actually works. So we're just going to show you this now. Let load up. Didn't take long to load up. Start deployment. So there we go. You can deploy anywhere behind this red line. So I can go on the right flank up there. I can stay behind you. These are all the men that I command. Our aim is to eliminate all of the enemy units or capture the flag which basically is a capture point but in the center of each square and i can capture things there now at different units i have bows i have spear so what i'm going to do i'm going to click on peasant archers i'm going to hold down control and i'm going to select this peasant archer and this one i selected all three of them and then going to go to the right hand side and when it says group selected units i can either press g or just click this button i'm just going to click this button they're now all selected so if i right click you can actually see where they'll be so if i put them there they point that way if i put them there like that like so happy with that but if you wanted to do it into a specific formation you can put them in loose for example you can then go to formation buttons controlled i can put them in a block 
I could put them mixed. This obviously other units would be involved. I could put them in a line, a corridor line like this. But I'm just going to put them flat like they are. I think that will work. I'm going to do the same for both cavalry units. I'm going to press G, have them grouped, place them on the right flank, for example. And then all my spears, same thing, put them grouped up, put them at the front. And as you can see, I've just done a, a standard group so I can stretch them out. They're not, enough, they're not enough formation, so I can just put them like that. And then I've got my general, of course, which I'm just going to put at the back of the line like this. Click the start button and the battle begins. So now, as you can see, if we go over here, if I hold down the mouse scroll wheel, I can zoom in just enough to see what they got, Rebel Peasants. Now, I'm confident about this, so I'm going to be quite reckless. I'm going to bring everything to the forefront. Now, if you want to fast forward, there's a button down here that says faster. You press that, it goes up to six. If you want to slow down, go slower. And if you go to the very bottom, it actually pauses it for you. Alternatively, you can press P, and that pauses it as well. So, this is the basic commands there. Also, the map, you can sort of just about make it out. You can zoom in. Just like that. You can see the red signifies the enemy. The green signifies me. Obviously, you could, they could have reinforcements that pop in from other side, other sides of the map. So it's important there. So I'm going to click 1. Or click on the actual number 1. And if I hover over the peasants, it gives me a red bow. If it, Because it's red, it means my bow units aren't in range. But if I right-click, it gives them an attack in order. So they're going to walk until they're in range, and then they're going to start firing. If I press R, or uh, sorry, if I press H, or if I click Run, then they go faster, they start running, and they'll run until they're in range. If I want to use Fire, they have special ability here, Flame and Arrow, click that, or press J, and they can start firing. So this is what will happen now. They'll get into range, and then they'll soon start firing onto the Peasants. The Light Infantry they don't have very good armor, so it's definitely worth trying to pop a few of them off if we can. They have Archer Militias coming towards us now. Because they've got archers come in, it's worth selecting my cavalry, bringing them slightly closer to the action. Because I'm going to be using the cavalry to charge into the archers. That would definitely be handy. And a few moments now, here we go. As you zoom in, you can see them. They're setting their bows up. Taking a few hits, but they're starting to fire. We are under fire as well. These status bar tells you. So, fire missiles. Just lost somebody down to 59 because it's red. Down to 54. So, we are losing men. And they haven't really lost anybody, those archers. So, what I'm going to do... I'm going to right click with the cavalry I've got selected to attack. I'm going to let my bows stay where they are. Actually, I'm going to spread them out a little bit, try and organize them. We're going to put them, I think we'll try and put them slightly closer if we, po if we possibly can. Put one like that. If I hold on spacebar, you can see where things go as well. So, movement order, you can see the yellow over there. That shows me where my bows are. I'll pop another one just behind like that. And here you go, cavalry's charging in. It's, it's archer, militia, and peasants at the front. I know I can do it. I wouldn't do it if the spears were nearer. But I've charged in, and as you can see, we are absolutely murdering them. Because cavalry is good against missile troops, and it's good against peasants and light infantry. But it's not going to be good against uh, spears, which they do have spear militias over here. So it's worth doing that. It's also worth bringing my infantry into this game as well. Now, no point letting everybody else have all the fun. Get my general near as well. General has a special ability, which is called Rally Troops. It basically gives a small morale boost for a short period of time, like a minute or two. So it's worth doing that. Cavalry is doing relatively well, I think. Although Cavalry seems to be better on the charge rather than long battles. That's why I want to bring my infantry in now as well, just to sort of support. Battles do tend to take quite a long time in these type of games. They're not over that quickly, usually. What I'm going to do is going to try and tell one of my Cavalry to pull through. As you can see, if I click that movement order there... This cavalry unit is going to pop along here. I'm just going to do this to, to use some basic strategy. Get them out of there. I'll set then set them up for a secondary assault. Meanwhile, I want all my bows to attack these at the back. This cavalry unit has been spotted. So I'm just going to click them out the way to get the spear militia away from them. Because obviously spear is bad. And I'm going to tell my other cavalry unit to now get out of there. Because they are going to be, they are going to be weak against uh, spears. So that does that. We've now got our infantry is coming into it now anyway. We've weakened them, our bows are now firing upon peasants. I'm gonna tell them to stop firing with fire. I think that might I think fire does lose some accuracy with each bow. So in a few moments now they'll stop firing. Oh we've got a kill over there. Guy got burnt, excellent. They're down to 75. Peasants. Infantry is attacking the archer militia. And that cavalry unit that I've moved out of the battle and I've put it there, I can now use him on the peasants. That's what I'm gonna do. We've got a nice little charge head on. We're gonna watch this charge as well. It's nice to watch um, some of these things, 
They've got a nice bit of speed building up. Peasants caught out. Charged in. Not the best to charge, actually. Did kind of stop a little bit. I think that building got in the way. But peasants against cavalry. There's only one winner there. Infantry doing well. I can put them into a Shiltron formation. That puts them into a formation where um, they go into a circle. And this little cutscene here it signifies when the general gets killed. So they've actually lost their general. It comes up with a little status menu on the left-hand side. A status message, sorry. And it's uh, Captain Onsell, the enemy general, has fallen. So he's now dead. Cavalry doing a fantastic job against the peasants. Only 11 of them remaining. I'm going to tell my general to get in now. I'm also going to tell him to rally. And there we go. And there we have it. That's more or less the battle. That's how it how it basically works. Obviously, it's other things like sieges. How you how you'd fight sieges. Um, you you would actually take a turn or two to build the siege equipment, and then you would get them. You get you'd use them on a settlement that has walls. So you'd have use you'd use a ram to break down a door. You would use a ladder to climb the settlement. It's just that little stuff like that. I can put these into a. I'll take that off that actually, and pop them just along the it like that. There we go, lovely. And then we're going to tell them to charge the peasants this side. We can flank into the back of them. I love using cavalry to charge in this game. They're really good at charging cavalry, I usually. Although these mailed knights seem to, get us, seem to be getting a little bit stuck on the settlements. But we are charging in right now. Into the back of Spearman, which is a little bit risky. But we took a few out on the charge. Got them down to 40, I think. And again, we're going to just pull out. Don't want to cavalry to stay in there too long. My other cav unit is obviously the other side of the battlefield. I'm going to tell him to come around here just to try and flank around. Use two to flank around. The infantry is taking up all the damage basically at the front for me over here. And the archers are actually not firing for some reason. That's because the peasants are dead, I think. I can get them to fire. Only thing is, firing into, into this pack means I may friendly fire a few times. But it's a risk that I'm happy to take at the moment. But if you're looking to be a perfectionist on the battlefield, then you shouldn't probably do this. Because obviously, arrows are dropping and they can hit my own men as well as theirs. So I'm going to tell this cavalry unit to get here. I'm going to press 2 to select both of them. And now I'm going to tell them to both charge from behind. So we're going to have two cavalry units charging around each flank at the same time. This one is fresh, obviously. The hobblers, like cav, charge into the flank. Boom. They've charged in. Second cavalry is going to come in and flank. Pull up with the hobblers. General, give a rallying cry. And if I want to, I can click on Control a to control everybody. And I can just charge him with every single thing. So there we go. They'll just do a little pincer on them. A little pincer move and they'll all jab in and try and kill them. So that's how you would select all of them. Red signifies when they lose. So the generals got 25. Lost some men. As you can see, we heavily outnumber them in the capture point now. Which is why the time has come on. I'm actually going to tell my archers to stop firing. I'm going to turn them around. I'll have them attack. And I'm going to pull both cavalry units out. They've actually lost quite a lot of men. With my cav. Just going to pull back. Let my infantry do all the work. I'm going to tell my general to get out there as well. He can actually pull through with them. Get him out. What do they have left? They have two missiles left. They have two spears left. I think that's actually it, isn't it? So we can probably uh, attack them all again. There we go. And I'm going to fast forward this just for the sake of time. This battle is easily won. There we go. And this is what comes up after the battle. 513 deployed, 125 lost, 388 remaining. We killed 311 and we captured 35 of them. So that's done. That is what the, bas the battles are basically like in uh, Medieval 2 Total War. So it'll now give me a message when I take York. As it loads up. So he says victory, holds his flag up proudly. And I got three options. I can occupy it. I get 40 florins for looting and that is it. And probably a bad public order because it wasn't my settlement. I can sack it. So I massacre part of the population and I get some florins. Or I can exterminate it. Um, I kill 408 and get 123 from looting. So I'm just going to sack the settlement. I still hold the settlement but I've actually got a bit of a profit from it as well. And obviously because I had a mission, I fulfilled the mission. So they've given me an extra 2,500 florins which I now have to spend on whatever I want to spend on. My general, Prince Rufus, winning first, gets plus one dread because he had a trait from that battle, and the enemy army has routed. If I click on York, it's got land, I can have land clearance, or I can have, um, I convert it to a moat and bailey. If I do that, it tells you what it does then. So I could do that, um, but obviously, 
I'll be, it'll be converted into a castle rather than a standard settlement, which is what it currently is. So it's little things you need to do. The trick is to take your time, start off on a campaign, which um, is very, relatively easy. I'd, I'd recommend start with England because you can just work on the mainland to begin with and just um, have units defend Cairns here. Uh, take the rebel settlements like I just did with York, take Carnarvon, take Dublin, and then look to have your first proper war with Scotland. I'd definitely work from there. I think that's probably the best thing to do with this campaign. Anyway, guys, I'm going to be ending the tutorial here. I hope it's been helpful. If it has, it would mean a lot to me if you check my channel out. I've got lots of other Total War content on here. I've been Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales. Until next time, goodbye.